Hello. Hello, howdy, hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the pajama party. Hi, Janet. Hi, 70 Acre Studios. Hi, Bewitched. Hi, Bella Nailed It. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Little Craft Creations. Hi, Crafty Caboose. Hi, Jane. So if you are watching this right now, obviously, and you see a chat that's lively scrolling to your right, then that means it is live. If you do not see a chat that is actively moving on your right side or um, anywhere on the page, then that means this is a recording, just so that you know, because I get a lot of people in the comments saying, oh, is this live now? Da, 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 da. No, because if, if you can comment below this video, that means it is not live and it is a recording. But if you see an active chat moving to the right, um, that means it is live right now. And it'll say live in red letters if it is live. Um, in the in the um, title, it'll have a red square with the word live in it if it is live. That's how you know you're in a live video. If you don't see any of that, then you are not in a live video. You are watching a recording of a live video. So just thought I would clarify that up for you for anybody that needs to know. So how's everybody doing tonight? 70 Acre Studios, you're playing with your Distress Oxides. Maybe we will do some of that tonight um, afterwards. <laughs> I reminded you of Romper Room. Yeah, that's what it's like. I say hello to everybody. Except I don't do it at the end. I do it at the beginning. And I don't have a magic mirror. Hello, Wanda. Hello, Crafty Caboose. Hello, Rinda. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Bev. Hello, everyone. Um, this right here is just a page from um, the Happy Mail that I got yesterday with the paints. Some of the paints were like, um, what do you call it? Like the, they had like holes in them. I don't know. I guess that's a thing. I don't know what, what why those paints do that. I guess maybe they got poor packaging. I don't know. But um, anyway, I took the leaked out paints and I put it onto a piece of watercolor paper and I thought it looked colorful. So I just have it here. Um, I did that um, messing around yesterday. If you didn't see that Happy Mail video, you can watch that afterwards. I put that up a little while ago. Um, I got a, some more Jane Davenport paints, which was really cool. We're going to use some of them today. We is going to use some of them today. Um, what I want to do today is um, use the... Uh, Deborah sent me this amazing um, butterfly book. It's the one where you can paint it yourself. So I want to paint it. Um, so yeah, I thought we would do that. But in order to do that, I got to take out... See, I can take out this one, but I can't take these out. Yeah, so I'm just going to have to paint it carefully because I'm probably not going to paint the inside. I'm probably just going to paint the outside. So what I'm going to do is I will get some tape and tape up around the edges here so I don't get any paint leaking underneath or whatever. I could try to keep it clean. Let's see, do I have any tape? Um, oh, yeah, I've got tape. I got tape. We'll see. So, is everybody having a good weekend so far? morning it's good night here is it morning where you are Sarah weekend is good so far Wanda you finished a, a huge project what project were you working on Anything you can tell us? And All 
right. Hoping I don't get paint any other wear than I want, but if I do, I do. I'm not going to cry over it, I guess. I am going to just, you know what? I am going to end up getting paint if I don't put some tape over the holes. At least that hole. Put some tape there. I know I'm probably going to get paint on the elastic, but I'll live. I ain't going to worry about it. You're sitting, Elizabeth is sitting in a truck stop in South Carolina waiting for 5 a.m. for next load. So not, so no bouncing. What does that even mean? Waiting for 5 a.m. I'm imagining you're a truck driver or you're with somebody who's a truck driver or something. You need to explain that situation, Missy. Because inquiry minds want to know what you mean by that. Just giving this a stir. Whoa, and splattering it all over myself. Yippee! No, I didn't want to get paint on the other side of the thing, but no, I got it all over me instead. That's okay. Ooh, the green of that came off. Well, we know not to use that anymore. Well, that's fun. We're off to a great start. I just want to gesso this because it's like canvas. And before I paint it, I would like to gesso it because it might be a little better if I do. Because then it'll act more like canvas, like real canvas. I don't care if I get paint on the elastics. I can't worry about it. Because if I spend time trying to prevent it, all it's going to do is make it happen even more. Did you ever notice that? You try to prevent things and then it just happens worse than it would have if you would have just not, not paid any attention to it. This thing is soaking it right up. Glad I put gesso on it. Because otherwise the paint would have just soaked right in. So if you guys get one of these, make sure you gesso it first before, if you plan on painting it. Gesso is your friend. Except for when it gets little clumps in it. Okay, I'm going to pick this up and stick it here for a second and clean up my righteous mess that I've made. All right. I'll put it over here. So is anybody else working on something? Anybody else working on a project tonight? Or am I the only one getting anything done? I think I'm going to do that. Since I have the butterfly book that has the mermaid on it, I think I'm going to do a fairy on that one. I might stamp some fairies on it. I might paint a really you know nice background and then stamp on it. 
That's my thought process anyway. You're making baby white flowers? You've done 130 of them? Goodness. Wanda made five cards today. Oh, nice. You're getting ready to teach a class. And Crafty is painting rocks, and she's going to work on pocket letters. <laughs> and Sarah's in bed trying to get some sleep, which I don't know why you have me on if you're trying to get some sleep, because I ain't going to let you sleep, lady. You ain't getting no sleep here. <laughs> Well, looks like everybody's getting some stuff done, which is good. I'm going to hit this with the heat gun real quick. Oh, hi, Secret. I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better today. That's good news. It's a little wet right there. determine whether it's dry or not. It's like weird. I think it is. I gotta figure out also which, I guess it doesn't matter which way is up. It don't matter. I think I'm gonna dry it just a little more. I'm hoping maybe Secret will keep me company later after the live stream because <laughs> I kind of freaked myself out and Chris isn't going to be here tonight. So I'm by myself tonight on top of freaking myself out like a dumbass. I should never have done it. But all last night and today I watched movie um, videos that were creepy 
creepy videos of this guy. I watch his videos. His name is, well, his channel is This Is Dan Bell. And he goes through, like, creepy old houses and creepy old places. And stupidly, I thought it would be a great idea this afternoon, all the way up until about an hour ago, to watch all these creepy videos of him going into these creepy haunted places. Yeah, not a good idea at all. Because then I was like, oh crap, Chris ain't going to be home tonight. I'm going to be here all by myself. And I'm just going to be creeped out all by myself. <laughs> but I do love watching his channel. His channel is amazing. And I just love watching stuff like that. Does anybody else watch stuff like that? Because I do. I get creeped out, bat, you know, being by myself without any help. I don't need help from videos to creep me out. Inside, it's not that I feel like there's ghosts here ever at all. I actually don't feel like there's anything in my house ever. Um, aside from just normal negative energy because of Chris, I don't feel like there's ghosts here or anything. I just get creeped out because I feel like people are going to come here. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like people are going to break into my house and like I get paranoid so it doesn't help that I watch creepy videos because then it makes me think of things like of things being in my house and you know like so yeah but watching like ghosty things doesn't make me feel like I'm gonna have ghosts because I don't feel like there's ghosts in my house ever I've never felt like that so um I feel pretty good about confident about that so that never bothers me. That never enters my mind because I don't feel like I have any issues with that. Um, but even if I watch creepy ghost things, I still feel like somebody's going to come and get me. And it, not ghosts, but like a person. Like I'm more afraid of a person coming to get me than, than if there would be a ghost or something, which I don't feel there is. <clears throat> not here anyway. Let's see, what colors do I want to use? I've got the, my typical favorites. I've got these colors. See, I had to tape up. I'd use duct tape and I taped them all up. Um, but it, at least the duct tape is pretty on some of them because I ran out of black duct tape, so I started using the sugar skull duct tape. Ugh, why does it seem like my video is so dark all of a sudden? Do I have to go back into the controls and fix it? Probably. Do I have the brightness set too low? Probably. I think I had turned it down at one point. There we go. Is that brighter? Is that better? What camera do I have? It's, um, well, right now I'm using the Logitech. I don't remember the name of it. The Logitech. It's an HD C90 or something. I don't like it though, honestly. Um, I'm not a fan of it because I don't like the fact that the focus is awful. When you try to show something close up, it doesn't focus. It takes forever. Well, that's, of course, going to work all of a sudden. But see how it'll focus and then it'll go completely out of focus? And then it won't refocus again. And it just, it'll focus for like a second and then it stops. And then it goes out of focus. I hate it. So I don't suggest this camera for anybody that wants to do craft videos at all. I mean, it's fine if you don't want to show anything close up. Um, but I don't personally, not a fan. Trying to decide whether I want to use that color. Yeah, I guess I do. <sighs> Let's see. Now I'm trying to decide. I'm going to go from like dark to light, I think.
I'm gonna wet my brush a little bit. But if you like to watch videos of people going into like um, old houses and old hotels and old stuff like that, you definitely need to watch that. Because it's not really about ghosts or anything. It's not about being haunted. He doesn't do it because he thinks they're haunted. And most of the time they're not. Nine times out of ten, you know, he just, you know, it's not because of anything haunted. He's just because he's just fascinated with old. He's like really fascinated with like old retro-y houses and hotels that are like abandoned and stuff. That's his thing. It has nothing to do with haunted. It just happens that a couple of times that he was, because he even says, I don't, you know, I'm not really, you know, I don't get freaked out by, you know, this, that, or the other or whatever. But, you know, he says... Uh, there's a couple of times, like a couple of episodes where he would hear some weird things, but overall he, you know, a lot of times he goes by himself and it doesn't freak him out and he doesn't, you know, it's just sometimes the places are kind of creepy because they're like, some of them are old hospitals or they're old hotels or resorts and just weird things. Now we're going to do the purple. I do like these paints though. These paints are nice. They go on nice and I probably shouldn't have done that. Well, I'll do it now. I'll just go towards the end. And then I'll rinse it off. I don't want to contaminate the whole thing, but back and do I just took a damp brush and I'm going over the dark to kind of help feather that into the into the darker paint which I think I need to add a little bit more of the darker paint because some spots are a little bit skimpy here Probably should have done the other blue first. I probably screwed up. That's okay. 
I didn't think I should have done the blue after the dark blue. For some reason, I did the purple. That's okay. I could still do it over top. It doesn't really matter. It don't matter. I could do it over top. I think that would be fine. What do you think? You think that would be okay? Why not? Let's try it and see what happens. Let's do it and see what happens anyway. Let's do it and see. Why not? I think it might look cool anyway. Yeah, it does. Kind of does look cool. I just might have to do a lot of rinsing in between. It's kind of interesting. Oh, that came out really kind of cool, actually. And then blend that into the purple. So it may not be the perfect color of the teal. It might be just a hint of it mixed in. Kind of looked cool. And then keep going with the purple down a little bit. That actually kind of did work out well. Just kind of work this down from here. Sorry, I'm not keeping up with the chat very well. I'm trying to keep this from getting itself in trouble. So I don't dip it into the paint by accident on the other side. further. Then we're going to mix the pink in. And we're going to get like a cool different shade of purple when we mix the pink in. In fact, I'm going to mix it in right in to the purple. is turning out to be like the coolest ombre ever. It looks really good, I think. Not to toot my own horn, but I think it came out really good. Now if I can just finish it off well and not screw it up somehow.
I'm going to stand this up a second and clean up my mess. I see a spot I want to fix on it though. Let me clean this up first. I'm hoping it's not too late and that it didn't dry. I think it might be too late, but I'll try anyway. There's a section I didn't notice until just now. Right here. It's streaky. If I hold it up like this, I can see it better. There we go. Add this. Not that much, but Yeah, that looks good. Looking good. Okay, I'm going to take this little bit of paint and we're going to go at it here. Something I don't like about these tubes is I can't open them up and put, I don't, I'm don't. i not a big fan of tube paint only because I can't open them up and put back what I didn't use. <laughs> like with these, I, with these kind of bottles, I can open up the top and scoop it back in. So I always get paranoid I'm going to use too much. I think that came out really cool. That definitely looks like a good fairy background, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to dry that real quick. pretty dry. I may have to go over some spots that are still have a bit of I could see through it a little bit but that's okay. I don't mind giving it a second coat. You can't tell, I don't think, but I could, yeah, you can, you could see it. You could see all the, like, the white streaking. I may go over it with a second coat and do exactly what I did, um, just because I want it to be really solid. And some areas are not solid, so, and I'm picky. <laughs>
Alright. We're gonna do a second coat just because I'm picky. I'm a picky bitch. I'm a picky bitch. We're gonna go over it again. This is the sections up by the stitches where it didn't like the paint didn't take exactly. Now this way I'll be able to get a more defined colors too if I do it over a little bit again or yeah do a second coat I mean I'll be able to get more defined color. So I think the lilac also was a little bit too thick compared to the rest of the colors so this way I'll get the two-tone blues that I was kind of looking for that I didn't get the first time. Okay, that looks better already. Much better. Although my paint water is getting all gunky. Sorry, I'm not very talkative. I'm concentrating. Concentrating hard. Okay, now let's get the purple to meld in to the blue. Do 
no more. Kind of let the blue do the job and pull it down. Let's see how that looks. It's hard to mix the, the get the blue mixed in. I might need to add a little more blue to incorporate it into that purple a little bit. I want to mix it so that they become a different type of purple. without losing all that blue up at the top. Like I don't want to lose all of this blue by dragging the purple up into it. So I'm going to drag some of that blue separately into it, I guess. That's better to kind of get a melge of the two colors. Oh, I need to clean my paint water. It's gross now. And now, when I take this and add it, that'll be easier to incorporate. Now we've got a better gradient of colors, I feel like, because you've got the dark going into the, the lighter blue and then the lightest blue and then this weird purple mix here and then this lavendery purple or whatever, well, lavender mix and then lavender and then we'll have like the pink, the pinky lavender and then the pink. So it'll give better, a more gradient kind of look. The trick is to clean your brush off and then go back over with the wet brush, nothing on it, in between the layers to kind of help blend the layers together. Some people do it differently. Some people like they don't blend their, they don't clean their brush and they just keep going back and forth. And to me, I can't ever get a good thing with that. It never works right for me. It ends up, I end up losing layers somewhere along the line. And I don't know why. I like doing it my way better. I've always kind of had better luck with it this way if I'm doing like an ombre or something. I haven't done an ombre in a really long time. I did one on a cover of a journal once um, years ago. I ended up giving it away, but that one, it was, it was shades of pink. It started out like a really magenta, almost red and it shaded all the way down to like the palest pink and it came out so freaking pretty and I, I probably shouldn't have given it away because I thought it was just so pretty and I did one once that I sold that was from black to blue it was like from the darkest black to like a lighter blue than that that one came out really pretty too see I'm going to start in the middle between the colors and take some pink and drag it into the purple. And go up into the purple. And that gives it that weird pinky purpley color. And then I'll clean my brush and go back over it with just a wet brush with nothing on it to smooth it out. Let me see something. Now I'll go back with the pink. I like the way these colors blend though, these Jane Davenport paints. Kind of dig it. 
They blend nice. with this. I'm happy with that now. I'm happy with that. What do you guys think? Good? Finally. I'm a picky, picky, picky one. Especially if I'm going for a specific look. If I'm just going for a mishmash, then I don't care. <clears throat> I like that all the colors, the Jane Davenport colors, they go together really well. They all kind of um, blend really well, which is nice. Alrighty, make sure my caps are on. And we'll give this a dry. What's the uh, ICAD challenge, Dana? Tell me, tell me, what's that about? Whatever is that about? held by Tammy Garcia, Daisy Yellow, you commit to making 61 index cards based on the daily prompts that she gives you. Wow, that's quite a commitment. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> it sounds like fun. I just don't think I could do it. I do want to do, um, I am going to do a postcard challenge for the, the, the next challenge for our group. I'm going to do a, uh, a postcard challenge where you make a certain amount of postcards but it's not going to be 60 something because I, I don't have the patience for that. Unfortunately, I wish I did. I do like the first five and then I'd be like, oh, I forgot. 
not because I'm flaky, but because I have so many things going all the time that my brain doesn't work as well as it used to, to multitask. I used to be able to do stuff like that. Not a problem. I don't know why I can't do it anymore. It's really weird. The doctor told me I had adult onset ADD, so I'm sure that has something to do with it. Um, so anyway, that looks cool. I think that looks awesome. I'm happy with that. <sighs> so now I've got to decorate it. Trying to think of what I want to do because I'm not sure a stamped image would show up on there. Maybe. But I could also stamp it onto like some tissue paper and then decoupage it onto there. I don't know. Hi, Sandy. Yeah, they gave me um, Adderall initially for this ADD that I have, and which I believe I do have ADD. Um, I didn't, I, I probably had a touch of it all my life, but I've always been a very like, like, I don't know, maybe I didn't because I was always a very like, in school, I probably had ADD, but as an adult, like I was always able to finish a project all the way through. I never had any problems with multitasking and doing multiple things at one time. I would finish everything I started. So I didn't really have a problem with it, I guess, until the last like five or eight years, maybe let's say 10 years. So probably like the last 10 years, I guess. I'm going to say I started having problems where I still finish everything I start, but I have a, like, it takes me a really long time and sometimes I don't go back to certain things for a really long time. And I used to never be like that. I would start something and, and like see it all the way through and not get, you know, and not, you know, put it off. I would do it and do it and do it until I got it done or because like Secret will sit and, and do like a project and she'll do something like when she's making her beads and she'll make hundreds of them. I used to be able to do that. And I used to sit and do things like that where I would make loads of one thing. And, you know, and for some reason I can't do that anymore. I don't know why. Like I have to work on things and then, you know, work on them, get them done and then be done with it because I get annoyed with them after a while. I don't like to work on something for like really, really long periods of time. I don't know. It's weird. Hi, Lonnie. I'm thinking though, I don't know if a stamped image is going to show up on here very well. I think I may have to do it on tissue paper or deli paper or something. Do I have that napkin? Yeah, I think I do. Somewhere I have like napkins. It might I might use that to do it on. I might stamp some images on some napkin. Um let's see. Let me see what images I want to use anyway, first of all. Let's go there, first of all. Oh, um I definitely want to put fairies on there, but I gotta find my big ones. Ooh, I want to do the moon. I've had this stamp forever and I haven't been able to do it, use it yet. I might want to put some of those on there. Let's see, where's my fairy stamp? I know I've got one that's kind of a decent size. There we go. Is that it? 
No, I thought there was one a little bit larger than that. Why do I think that? Is there one that's bigger? I could have sworn there was one more that was a little bigger. Here it is. It is this one. That's the one I'll use. But see, it's going to be this way. That's fine. I don't care. It don't matter. What we'll do is... I want to do... Like I've got this moon. I want to use, I think, just this one, or maybe this one and this one, because they layer together. But I'm going to do it on tissue. Let me go get some of that tissue I was talking about. I think it's over here somewhere. Or maybe I'll just use the deli paper, because I've got it handy. We'll try that. Let's see what happens. We'll see. We'll play. We'll see how this all works out. Let's start with the moon and see if I can do this moon. Let's see. Let's see. We're just going to play around and see what this looks like stamped out. Because I've not used it yet. Because I was waiting for an opportunity like this. Actually, I was going to do it on a postcard, but I never got to it yet. Um, I'm supposed to do... I'm supposed to, like, layer it with different colors, I guess. Like, with the yellow, and then do, like, a darker color and a darker color or something. But I'm not going to use this one. I think I'm just going to try this one. all over that. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I probably should use my Misty tool if I was going to use two of them together. Huh. That might be smart. Let's try it here. Goodness, it gets stuck. Yeah, I might need to use my Misty tool if I want to use that properly because then I got to put the other one on, I think, and I've got to line it up. Uh, which I'm not, whoops, sorry, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to figure out how to line it up properly. That way or this way? I don't know. Let's just see. Just do it and see what happens. Whatever. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Huh, that's okay. That might work. I don't know how to stamp it properly. That's the problem. Hmm. Oh, that was an awful sound. Holy crap. Sorry. It's like if you're supposed to stamp it. I'm assuming it goes on the block like that. Let's try this. Let me try something else. 
think my stays on needs to be re-inked because it's not very juicy. Okay, take this off like this. Put this one on like this. Hmm. Yeah, the stays on needs to be re-inked, first of all. That's not working out so well. What if I use archival? Maybe that'll work better. Maybe this will be less messed up. I'm just not getting a good impression. I feel like the ink sucks. That's better. Much better. Oh, well, that's better. Oh well, that's what I'll use. It doesn't have to be like massively perfect. That'll be fine. That will do the job. I'm wondering if one of my punches will punch that out. Let's see, shall we? Do I have a punch? Let's see, will this punch that out? Yeah. Hmm. Or get stuck in there and ruin it. Damn it. Ugh. Frustrating. Well, that ruined that. Okay, I guess you can't punch tissue paper. Damn it. <sighs> Somebody, please. Please, just kill me. Let's do this again. Do that one. Stamps are sticky as hell. Let's see if I can get this one on now. <laughs> I don't think it's so even. No, that looks horrible. Oh, God, this is frustrating as hell. Let's try the Misty. Why do they make stamps like this if they're almost impossible to line up? And they don't give you any pointers on how to line them up. They just, like, really? Like, say, here, do this to line it up. Nope, they don't. They just don't do anything. I mean, for the love of God, just work, please. Now, how am I supposed to ink this up with this big pad? That's fabulous. This is the only black pad I have that's not... that doesn't need to be re-inked. Yeah, I would cut it out if it wasn't ruined. I didn't know that ahead of time that it was going to get ruined. And now when I go to pull this off, it's going to get stuck. And it's going to ruin where I have it placed. So yeah, that, that, that wasn't a good idea. That's not a good idea. Because this is never going to line back up. Let's see. Let's line this. See if I can line it up like this then. Pain. But. Yeah, 
I think I screwed that up too, but that's okay. Good God. Stamping. Too difficult. I'm getting annoyed to the point where in a second I'm just going to throw this away and draw a black moon myself. Because this is starting to piss me off. <laughs> Anybody else get frustrated and just want to throw things in the garbage? I do. Good enough. Don't care at this point. I'm going to cut it out with scissors. It's either that or throw it in the garbage. One of the two is going to happen. Okay. That took way longer than it should have. Let's let that dry while we stamp something easier like the fairy where I don't have to worry about it. <sighs> the only thing I have to worry about with this is getting enough ink on it. I'm sure they have a website that shows you how to use it and I think I've even seen it I'm pretty sure I've even seen it for this stamp set um it's just they should put something in the package that gives you like an easy reference guide on how to line it up or here go to this website to see you know anything would be better than nothing any bit of information that could be helpful would be helpful all right Let's start with this. Is this I'm going to rip out? So that it doesn't have much of an edge on it when I put it down. There we go. There's our fairy girl. Um, there's our book. She's going to go here. The moon, which I can cut out. All right, I'm just going to hit this with the heat gun a little bit. Before I add any kind of liquid to this. Do have uh, well, I won't worry about it. I think that'll look fine. I think I want it over there, over here, maybe over there.
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's get her down. I'm going to use this because I have it and I need to use it up. Some matte medium. It's nice and thick. Probably too thick. Yeah, it is too thick. Let's water it down, shall we? here and water it down. I could choose to use this. What made me think that that was a good idea? I'll use something different next time. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't like that I could see so much of the outline of it, but that's okay. Alright, this stuff needs to go in the garbage. It's all clump. It's trash. I got it from the creative reuse so long ago. I have more Come on. Oh, give me my bangs. I didn't think it was going to be that clumpy. also from the creative reuse not that one this one's open come on god damn it excuse my french oh, jesus i'm having a good time tonight goodness I just about killed myself trying to get that open. Okay. I wish that this wasn't showing. I thought it was going to disintegrate more into the background, but that's okay. I don't mind at this point. I'm so frustrated with the with the whole stamping thing and then the matte medium that wouldn't work properly. I don't really care at this point. <laughs> That frustrated me to no end. Alright, now we just need to figure out what else we're going to put on. Yeah, I do that too, Sandy. I drop everything and, yeah, all the time. I like these sparkles better. I might just try stamping them and see how it works out. I can try it and see if it works. I already screwed it up, so it ain't going to hurt it at this point. Hmm. 
That's okay. Not bad. We're just going to leave it like that. We could probably paint around her or glitter around her or something to cover that up. That's okay. Nope, that didn't show up there, did it? There we go. Fixed it. I fixed it. That's why I didn't want to stamp on this, because it's very hard to stamp on things like fabric-y things. It ain't easy. It ain't easy stamping on the fabric-y things. Well, if I would have known it would have at least stamped a bit, I would have not done the fairy that way. But I thought for sure it was not going to stamp very well. I guess I should have just tested it out and said, screw it. But that's okay. Too late now. Mm, what else we got? What else have we got? I want to do fairy. I wonder if the saying will show up. Let's find out. I want to put it underneath of her legs, her feet here. Yeah, it does. Cool. Cool. I forget where it was. I don't know. Let's stick it there. Do I want to put the butterfly? Do I have a smaller butterfly? I'm sure I do. It's just impossible to get to anything with the way my chair butts up against my drawers that I can't open when I'm sitting here more than about an inch. To see if I have the butterfly. Hmm. Mm, butterfly. Oh well, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's too much frustration. I'll just use this one. I'll just use the one that's in there. There we go. So I have my bizarre looking cover that has a weird outlined girl, which I shouldn't have done. <laughs> Leave it to me to find a way to screw it up. It would have been better if I just stamped everything. And there's no way for me to pull this off now, I'm imagining. Nope. Nope. That's on there. That's really on there. <laughs> that's okay. I still like it. I still think it came out pretty groovy. What do you think? Still pretty groovy to me. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. We'll put that back in its little package. Hi, Laura. All the little 
little fairies away. Remove the stamps for now. Put that in some water. I still think it looks pretty. I don't know what I did with the string that I pulled off. Oh, I gotta put that one away. Put that there for now. Can I kind of see what I did with the string when I pulled it off? There it is. I found it. So it's not completely dry, but when it is dry, I'm going to let it dry completely. I'm probably going to put a whole layer of the matte medium over it, but I'm not going to do that right now. All right, we'll set that aside. We'll clean up my hands a little bit. And then, what should we play with? Maybe some oxide inks? get my thing back in here. cleaned up a little bit so I have room room to do my thing um here they are right here stacked up now I just need to figure out what I did with the paper that I had out for them I'm pretty sure Wait, is this it? Yeah, this is it over here. No, nope, that's not it. What is it? This is it. I've got paper. Yeah, this is papers. And I still got black left too. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, okie dokie, okie dokie, Smokey. What should we do? We should should we make a tag? We make a tag. 
Um, let's see. I have. I wonder if I have a tag. Well, I have these Manila tags. I can just trace one, and then have a white tag because it would probably work better on white. So that's what we'll do. We will take this pencil. And we will make a tag. And Alrighty, let's make a tag, shall we? Okay, we shall. Why the hell not? You're not my mom. You don't tell me what to do. I'll make a tag if I want to make a tag. <laughs> okay. What colors? What color should we make the tag? How about purple? Let's start with purple and pink because I, I like those colors. I just so happen to like those colors. Ooh, we'll do faded jeans too. Just so happens I like those colors. Who would have thunk it? I have no idea. You didn't know that. It was just some random information. You had no idea that I liked those colors, did you? No, never would have guessed. I'm doing it on this glass, which I think, oh, that came out pretty cool, actually. I don't mind it. Somebody said to do it on a craft mat, which I was doing it on a craft mat. I just did it on the glass, and it kind of gave it a different look, which I kind of dig. I ain't afraid. I ain't scared. Stop bending over backwards and lay down. Thank you. Now, now it's like, now you're bending the other way. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Either way, let's go back in for some more. Next time I'll use the mat and see the difference, but I kind of like the way this is looking. It's different. I'll just keep drying it. Take a little water. Oh, I gotta go get some clean water. Let's do some water. Clean that up. Ah, we got some good spotting. That looks pretty neat. I kind of like that. Hmm. Just dry that a little bit and then we'll add another color to it.
Maybe I'll zoom you guys in a little bit more so you can see what the heck I'm doing. Wow, my mouse is just not working. There we go. Is that better? What's wrong with my camera? Oh, is it getting confused? Is the glare bothering it? I can get that other mat down. That would be helpful. Hold on. Let's get this mat. Crap. Craft a lanch. Things are falling down. Let's see. Let's use this mat. Okay. How's that? Better? That's what we've got so far. I'm thinking let's add some spiced marmalade to the mix. Is it better now? If, you, if it's doing that jittery jumpy thing, let me know. I can restart the camera and make it kind of get better. So there's some spiced marmalade. This mat will give it a little bit more spottiness on my on my tag anyway. Well, somewhat. We can use this tag as a backup and see what happens. And we'll use the manila tag too. I bet it'll be just fine. Is the camera skipping? All right, hold on a second, okay? Bear with me. I'll fix everything. Just, it's going to go blank for a minute. Just, just chill for a second. I'll be right back. All right. This should be better now. It should be a lot more stable. It's because after I'm live streaming for like a little while, like my computer starts to bog down because my computer is a piece of crap. So it can't handle, you know, the constant use. So it'll kind of It'll kind of freak out and start acting like a jackass. So I just need to shut everything down and just restart the program that I use to help it along. And that kind of makes it a little appear. Is that better? Focus. All right, so I might, do I want to add any more color to that? I think it kind of looks kind of cool the way it is. I like how it's got those teeny tiny little dots in there. You see those? And down here, they look kind of cool. I kind of like those, but do I want to add something else? Hmm, maybe we'll add broken china just for, just for ha-ha's. All right, I'm glad it's better. Let's add a little bit of the broken china.
water. Get some more splattery splats. more water. I like the splattery splats. Now I feel like it's too bright so you can't see the color. Let me That helps a little bit. There we go. That looks really cool. Really cool. You can see it better when it's not so bright, but I have the camera set bright, so it's brightening it. It's not as bright as that looks on camera. Let me dry that a little bit. That's a cool one. Now we can work on this one. Let's work on this one. Why not? Let's do some cracked pistachio. 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 I know it's called pistachio. Sounds better as pistachio. Can you do this with all stamp pad types? Um, no, because um, I'll show you actually. I will show you what happens when you use regular distress inks and you do this. I will get them out. We will experiment. Good thinking. Let's do that. Let's get out some distress ink pads and attempt to do the same thing. Let's get regular distress ink. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a piece of paper. Oh, not that one. What'd I do with it? Most paper I had out. Oh, over here. Do I'm just gonna cut this one. Just gonna cut a piece off of that. Okay. We'll do the same thing. We we'll use similar colors because this is picked raspberry. It's not worn lipstick. It's brighter, but you get a different look. It's not the same thing. We we'll use those two. You can do this, obviously. 
and get color and get some cool backgrounds and do fun things with this. However, what you can't do is the layering thing that you can do with the distressed oxides because what happens is it ends up, let me use this one too since I actually put a lot of ink down. You don't get the same kind of effects that you get. You get a different effect. It's very different. Let's do this. They tend to blend more when you use the regular distress inks. They kind of blend more and these kind of sit more like I can't explain it, but I'll show you. We'll use different colors. For instance, on here with the distress oxides, I was able to use whatever color I wanted. As long as I dried it in between, I can use any color I want and it'll show through. As you could see, you could see the orange, the blue, the purple right next to the orange and none of it made mud. There's not an ounce of mud on this card. You could see the teal next to the purple, next to the orange, next to the, you got like this yellow color, you got pink, you got all your colors and there's no mud. There's absolutely no brown on here. But if I were to take this pink and teal and purple that it made and let's clean this off and add orange and add um, that's the oxide what am I doing and add like yellow do I have an orange crap I don't have an orange do I have an orange wait I might have an orange I need like an orange color to do it yeah here it is First, they, first of all, they don't show up the same, but like, let's say I wanted to do like, um, like peeled paint and mustard seed. Now these are more distress inks. Okay. These are regular distress inks. Ooh, yeah. All right, this is not going to be pretty, I guarantee you. This is going to be really bad. You see what I mean? Like it just became a giant pile of mud. Like everything just turned a weird green color. All the colors that were underneath, aside from what's on the very sides where it didn't I didn't get. You know what I mean? Like but all the colors that are underneath, see like I've got mud here disappeared it took it took over it de it destroyed the colors that were underneath you don't see the pink and the purple aside from where i did not hit the mat whereas here you get a different situation you could see all the colors you layer it layers there's a big difference between the two types of inks these are great for making a background with two or three colors and just doing it once and maybe if you wanted to layer over top of it you can layer with like like, you know, layer similar colors and maybe just do a little bit. Like, for instance, let's say I have that little bit of color on there. That's become a hot mess now. Let's move that out of the way. Um, but let's say I wanted to add some yellow to this one. So maybe with the distress inks, I would just go like over to the sides and, and kind of you know, it, cause it kind of takes over unlike the oxides where it see like it kind of takes over. Whereas with the oxides, if I, you know, if I were to do the, uh, where the hell did it go? Like the fossilized amber. Like if I want to do this color and 
and then dry it. Well, yeah, Distress Ink, you can use these like watercolors. You can absolutely, you can use the, the oxides as watercolors too. You could do that with either of them. Any kind of dye ink, and these are a dye pigment mix. The oxides are a dye pigment mix, which is why they act the way they do. Whereas the, the, the regular Distress Inks are just dye ink. And, but either of them you can use, you can add water to and use as a watercolor. So, okay, kind of like I did the yellow, you're going to see the difference. I'll even pick up what's on here too, just to add a little more on there. But like, now if I add a blue on here, like I added the yellow on top of the blue, same difference. I'm just doing it backwards. I'm starting with the yellow. Regardless, when I added the yellow over top of the blue, I got this, this green, ugly green color. You know what I mean? But if I add either blue over top of these, I'll do both of them. I'll do a little bit of that one, a little bit of this one. I'm not going to get an ugly green color. I might get a little touch of green, but... You see what I mean? Like the colors sit right on top. They don't turn into a weird color. They stay the colors that they are meant to stay, which is pretty remarkable. And you can't get that with distress inks. See, and now when I dry it, it stays like that and it doesn't turn into this. You see what I mean? Like it doesn't just go over top of it and mute out the color underneath. It sits on top of it and gives, you know, a totally different color. So that's why you can layer so many colors on top. You know, like I can go in now with this one and layer this over top of the yellow and, and the orange. So that's why they're different. They're not the same as dis regular distress inks. You cannot get the same looks with dist regular distress inks. You can get a different look with, with regular distress inks, but you're not going to get this same look. It's going to, distress inks, they're going to constantly mix with the layer beneath it, whereas oxides are going to sit on top of, each layer is going to sit on top of the next layer so that you're going to see each layer individually which makes it have that really cool kind of rainbowy look where you could see all the colors, but yet it doesn't look like muddy mess. And this one's going to look like muddy mess like this, where it's just going to be a blob of color that looks like a mess. You're never going to get the same thing. You see what I mean? But with distress inks, you can get some really cool backgrounds you just don't layer them, you know, like with distress inks, let's say I wanted to make this little piece of paper have a cool background on it. I would do it all in one go. I wouldn't layer on top of each other. Like I would do the peacock color, the peacock feathers and maybe like these three colors, let's say I wanted these three colors, I would do complementing colors, unlike the distress oxides, where you can kind of do whatever colors you want, whether they go together or not. But with the, the distress inks, you want to make sure that they complement or they are blendable colors. You always want to make sure the colors with distress inks, you can blend them together so that you can not have to worry about if you get one color into the next color. Like even that got like a little muddy. You know, you can get cool backgrounds with these. You just got to be careful what you mix together. You know what I mean? Like you can get some cool looking things. You just need to know what you can, can and can't put together.
And see, when they're on here, they start to get muddy already if they're next to each other sometimes. Whereas the Distress Oxides don't really do that. So it's just a different... There's just They're just two different looks. You can use them together, too. So you can do like a base color of the regular Distress Inks and then decide... You want to do something over top with the with the oxides? You could do that. Like I can go. That's distressing. I got to get these out of the way before I screw up. Like I can take this one. Oh, that's distressing. What did I do that for? I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do oxides. Oh well. Let me get something else and I'll mop that up. I'll use this for something else. I meant to do the oxide. Duh. Anyway, I'm getting them mis mixed together now. Anyway, the peeled paint. Like now I can go over top of this and do some layering and you could see You can do like one layer of the regular distress inks and then go over the rest with oxides and do cool things like that. So you can do stuff like that. Also, um, regular distress ink doesn't show up on black paper. It just kind of, you know, like if I take, for instance, I don't have the both the same colors, but this is fossilized amber in the oxides, and this is the mustard seed in the um, in the distress. Now, if I take the distress and put some down and squirt it, they're both a yellow color, and I put this on on the black ink. It doesn't do anything. It just show, shows up as wet. It doesn't show the color because it just because it's a dye ink and it's not going to show up. However, if I take the oxides and I put them on black ink, they show up. So you can make some really cool things on black paper that you can't do with distress inks. So that's the cool thing about distress inks or distress oxides. Stacy, could you show Laura the fidget spinner? Yeah, I can show you my fidget spinner. I love my fidget spinners. I have a few fidget spinners. <laughs> I have a little bit of an addiction to fidget spinners. Um, there's this one. I love this one. Yeah, they're for people that have either ADD or um, um, like a Asperger's autism to keep you or anybody that's fidgety like I am I sit and fidget all the time so this is a great way to get out my get out my fidget and these will spin for like minutes and minutes like five minutes I could sit here for the longest time and this will keep spinning And they're cheap. They're really cheap. If you go on Amazon, I get them for like a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. They're so cheap. So every now and again, I'll pick a new one up when I see it for a couple dollars. 
And then I got this one. This one I think was my first one that I got. I love this one. I love them all. And then this one, if you hold on a second. Whoops, hold on. Isn't that cool? That one lights up. <laughs> I just have to bang it on something and, and it'll, if I bang it, it'll light up. Yeah, it's like a disco in my hands. But yeah, those are my addiction, my fidget spinners. Just look up on Amazon. Look up fidget spinner. Um, there, some of them, like some of them will be like 10 and $15, but you can find cheaper ones. Just keep looking and searching around until you find the ones that are like three and $4 or $2, 250 to, you know, whatever you could find them. And if you have any issues, just contact me either email me or whatever. And I could, I can find you some, you can find them on eBay too. Amazon, eBay, stuff like that. Does anybody have any more questions about the oxides between, you know, oxides versus um, distress inks, regular distress inks? I think it's kind of important to have both, in my opinion. I like my distress inks um, for making really cool backgrounds, obviously not muddy messes like this. Um, it's got some good sections to it that I can use, but um, I like making different types of backgrounds. Like, here's an example. This was the distress ink. And I still like this one I could do because as long as you use complementing colors, you're good. So let's see. I've got that. Got that. Where's the yellow? Oh, here it is. And if you use them carefully and you don't put down three at a time, if you just do one. Because with the Distress Oxides, you could put down a few at a time and just have at it. But with these, you got to be careful where you place the ink. Um, you don't want to just put it willy-nilly because, unfortunately, they won't always look right. Whereas the Oxides, you could just put it wherever and it's just going to look cool. So there's that. I put yellow. Now this is all Distress Inks. This is not Oxides. And you can make some cool backgrounds. And then here's like an evergreen color. I should probably dry this for a second. You want to dry it in between. You'll lessen your chance of having mud or a weird color if you dry it a little bit. Did I forget to spray it? Yeah, I did. I was like, that was really dark. You just need to be a little more conscious of, conscious of where you're, what colors you're putting down and, and everything with the distress inks. These are all colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Whereas with the stress oxide, you don't have to worry about that. You can put whatever colors you want next to each other. And now, finally, I'm going to do some of the tumbled glass. Or I can even do a little bolder of a color. As long as it'll... I could probably get away with this. 
maybe. Hmm. I might be able to. It might mix with the green and look funny. See, that's what I mean. Like, you have to think about it with these. That's all. You just got to think about it a little more. Yeah, it's not bad. It should be okay. Whereas with the oxides, you don't have to think. You can just grab whatever colors you want. It's cool to not have to think. And like these won't layer. They kind of make a different, totally different color when you lay them on top of each other. might be able to still get away with one more color this tumbled glass which probably won't show up very well because it's gonna yeah it's gonna kind of get lost whereas with the other ones it would actually layer right on top and you would you would see it But it still looks cool. See, it looks like a cool background, but it only looks like there's like two or three colors on here. When I put like, what, four colors, five colors, it doesn't give the same layered look, the depth that the oxides give. And I could completely destroy this by going over this with pink, whereas where you wouldn't think pink would go over this, I can totally go over this and it's got orange and dark blue and other... I can go over this with pink and it won't meld with the colors where if I go over this with pink, it's going to make it look like crap. It's going to instantly ruin this. Because as long as you're careful with what you put down with distress inks, you get this really cool look. And I can even do the water splatter thing with it. I can either, you know, you could still do the water splatter thing where you go over it with some water and let it sit for a second and then pick it up and you can, you know, get cool effects. So you can get good effects with the distress inks. It's just not the same as the distress oxide. Now, if you want to get, go through the trouble of taking, um, of taking some clear gesso and going over it, and which, of course, first you'd have to spray it because even the clear gesso would run as soon as you start putting it on. But you could spray it with some clear stuff and do it that way, clear matte finish. And then you could go over it with other inks and it would sit on top and it wouldn't run through. You can kind of do that, but it still would never look as cool as the distress inks or the oxides do. It's just never going to look that way unless you have the oxides. But yeah, you definitely can get some cool stuff. You just got to be careful and watch your colors. You got to know what colors are blending, pro will blend well together and use only those and don't overdo it. Use like three colors, maybe four colors max, all colors that complement that are like right next to each other on the color wheel, like greens and yellows. Okay. You know, they're going to go together well. Whereas the oxides, you can use purples and oranges and yellows and blues and, you know, orange and green and whatever color you want. It doesn't matter. You could just pick whatever colors. That's the difference between the two. For anybody that wanted to know. Both equally awesome, just different effects.
So now I've got some really fun prints. we got to add to this one a little bit. I still like this one. This one's actually pretty cool, even though it's got some mud. Uh -oh. Hello? What? Oh, you didn't, you weren't able to do it? I didn't know I could. I'll try to. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah, if you're, uh, if you're an, uh, one of the admin in here, one of the, um, the moderators, you can just right click, click on that person. I don't see them anymore. Oh, there they are. Okay. Goodbye. Okay, I got rid of him. Secret called me to let me know that there was a troll, but if you're a moderator, you can also click next to their name and and obviously remove them, report them, block them from the thing. Yes, we're going to finish the tag. I was just showing um, all the different things. And I'm going to actually finish both of these tags. I'm going to add some more color to this sucker right here, though. We are going to add some more color. Let's see. Let's add. Let's add some. Ooh, let's add some fired brick. And. And violet. See, like, these are colors I could not add next to each other. Never. I mean, if you, all right, it can happen that, okay, let's say I did purple and green next to each other on the mat. Let's say I rubbed these two down and I wanted to do this with the oxide inks. Now, while these are wet on the mat, if they meld together, they're going to make a disgusting color. So that you have to be careful of. So if you have, let's say, you know, these two colors you want to use, just use one at a time. You can layer them on top of each other, but on the mat, you don't want them to run into each other and become gross. But because this is like a reddish color, I'm assuming it should be okay. Did I just do that both? Oh, never mind. I didn't do the purple. Whoops. Anyway, I'll do the purple next time. I thought I grabbed the purple. And now, let's see, we can add some to this, too. There we go. I didn't mean to grab the red twice. I kind of meant to get the purple in there. Actually like this enough to add some of this on this one. I really like this color. It's kind of groovy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's a cool color. I like that. I like it a lot. Let's see. We can add it on here even. I don't mind. I'll add all the colors. Okay. All right, now add the purple. Did I dry this enough? No. Oh, I really like that. Can you see it? That one came out cool. I like that. But see now, I did this over top of the green and the orange, and see it didn't it didn't mix the two together. It, it just went over top of it, really cool, and you could still see the blue underneath. So. That's what I mean with the distress oxides. It's just kind of cool how that happens. And like now I'll do the purple. Now the obviously the red might be a little too dark for the purple to show up properly. That that could happen too. Um, if the red, if you put like one dark color over top over top of or a light color over top of a darker color, obviously it's not going to show up as bright. It might not show up at all. But that's not a fault of the 
you can actually you can do this sometimes and, and the purple will show up like right now here let me do it again the purple's wet and when you do that you get like you can see that but you see how the red and the purple sitting on top of it like do you see the difference like it just looks really cool where that wouldn't happen in normally that something like that won't happen normally it's just so cool um also with the oxide inks it the whole point of them is because they do this oxidizing which is why they're called oxides they kind of oxidize unlike distress inks that look bright and vibrant the oxide inks get, they give like, um, it's almost like a chalky look, but they almost look like they're oxidizing. Like, I don't know if it shows up, but like, it almost looks like they have like that vintagey kind of oxidation going on. And so that's why they have their name because they almost look like they're oxidizing, which is really cool. Let's see what other color. I can't wait till they come out with more oxides. Let's add some peeled paint to this on the outside a little bit. Like just in spots where it needs some color. Like I put it right over the red and it didn't make mud. Red and green are opposites on the color wheel, which means they make mud together. So when I put the green on top of here, it should have made mud. But instead, it didn't do anything but just kind of you know, give it a little different oxidized look. It didn't really do much because the green was lighter than the red. So it didn't show up necessarily, but it didn't make mud. You know what I mean? Like, it's just weird how that happens. It always, all always ends up looking cool. All right. That's my one tag. Where's the other one at? There it is. Very cool tags. Got to make sure I keep my oxides together so I don't get them mixed up. Okay, let's do some inking around the edges. I want to do that with purple on this one. So I'll use this one. Let's see, where's my little thing in the bobber. There it is. Whoops, I just threw it on the ground and didn't mean it. Thanks for calling me, by the way, Secret, and letting me know about the jackass in the room. You can still do the thing where you blend colors in and you know like you could still do that with these cut with the oxides just as you would any other ink oh you know what I want to do the outside with purple on this since there's a little bit of purple in here we'll do both of them with purple on the outside I think it'll look cool They 
they've both got a little purple in them. Groovy, groovy. And the nice thing about the inks, the distress inks, if you try to pick them up by their, like, the, the, the lids fall off, whereas the oxides, the lids don't fall off. I like that because then you don't have to worry about if you put them in your drawer or something, they fall over and the lid like comes off or something or whatever. And this one I'll actually put a little thing on and put it underneath of here. A little Velcro. There are 12 new colors of the oxides coming out. That's exciting. That's good. See, I was just talking to somebody about the marketing of the oxides and that it's really important that they keep putting those colors out while everybody is on this hype. Like if they were to put them out every four or five months until they've gotten all the colors out, they're going to keep that hype going and everybody's going to want to buy them. But if they wait a year and put out 12 more colors, then it's kind of going to lose its hype in the interim. So I'm glad about that. If that's the case, if they're putting out 12 new oxide colors, that's exciting. That That's something I'll be excited about. Bye, Marion. Have a good day at work. That's awesome because there are some colors that I'm hoping they, I hope they come out with some more of the pinks and more of the purples, of course, because, you know, I love the pink and the purple. Okay, so now we got to figure out what we're going to put on this tag. And I am thinking that maybe we should stencil some metallic colors over top. I think that would be cool to add a little metallic. Let's see, I've got this metallic purple. We can do spots of metallic over that one. And on this one, we'll do, oh, I'm trying to find, maybe the, this color here. Oh, good. I'm glad they're coming out with more. That's exciting. Let's see. I need a stencil. Oh, this one's fine. I'll use this one. I used these the other day, too. I like these stencils. Ones I got in Happy Mail. I'll use a different one. And I'll use this one. We'll just add some. Uh, add some metallic. What did I do? Stop it. See, secret, what you got me doing now? I'm saving these stupid things. Saving my paint boogers. Cool. That came out awesome. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I might put like a ribbon across it. I don't know. This one I think I'm going to do like this. Do it in the purple. Purpley pinky color.
just to give a touch of sheen. That's really pretty. Look at that. How pretty is that? And that. Who is the metallic paint by? Okay, that is by PBO. PBO Studio. And the, I got these with my Christmas money at, oh boy, where did I get these? Dick Blick? Yeah, I think Dick Blick. Because if I'm going to buy anything paint-wise, you know, that's not like crappy craft paint. Well, I mean, I don't think craft paint is crappy at all, actually. But you know what I mean? Like, if I'm going to buy cheap paint, um, I'll just go to Walmart or Joann's or whatever. But if I'm going to buy anything decent, I usually go to Dick Blick because I always find that they have the cheapest prices. And, oh, this is not popped all the way out right here. Didn't notice that till now. That's okay. Um, yeah, I've noticed that in comparing paint, um, like if I want a certain type of paint, which these were cheap, they're not like, it's a pretty big tube and it's, it was like $4 and something. So, I mean, it's a hundred milliliters. So it, if you compare that to 59 milliliters and these are like a dollar 25 and these are, so it's like a little bit more, it's like double the amount. For like four or five dollars and these are like a dollar 25 the folk art ones like you know what I mean it's not that much more expensive in other words it's just slightly it's just like a slight upgrade they're not fancy or anything and I like metallic paints I'm a metallic whore I love it <laughs> everything I have I love metallic paints I think I'm going to put something over that so that it kind of cuts it off there. But I'm going to let those dry a minute. If you guys can sit tight for a second, I need to go fill my glass with tea. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Alrighty. These are about dry. <laughs> Love your glitter. I do too. Yeah, <laughs> 70 Acre Studio said, you and me, Stacy, on the corner, selling ourselves for metallics. Damn right, and glitter. Metallics and glitter, man, they're like my favorites. I think these look really cute. I don't know about you, but I think they look cute. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get some uh, strings, which, oh boy, I'm making a mess. Oh. Would that work? Mm. What color? It would. I could do something like that. Let me see. I would rather use some metallic threads, maybe. I've got some multicolor. Are they going to? Is this going to unravel on me? What's the deal? What's going on? Why is this acting a fool? Say what? Let's do 
is R. I'm just going to wrap a bunch of this around there. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. This is like really jacked up. Let me cut that off. Um, Sorry, my thread is like all screwed up. Okay. Huh. All right. Let's see. How much do I want? Let's put a piece of tape on the back. I may have to back this with another tag or something. Where's my tape? What did I do with it? Oh, I'll take a little masking tape. That'll be fine. That'll do the job. Okay. Come on, quit getting in my way, jackass. So that's got some pretty metallic multicolored threads on that one. Okay. Put this stuff away before I lose it. Okay. Ugh. Up there. Go up there. Don't fall down. Okay. So that's that one. It looks better in person because it's hard to pick up the different colors in the metallic thread. It's all different. It's like a variegated, all different colors, but it looks really pretty on there. And then we will put um let's see. I want to put like a flower or something. Oh, you know what I can do? I've got, let's see. I can use a wood heart. I can paint that. Let's paint that. Let's paint that. Let us paint that. What color do I want to paint it? Maybe I'll paint it this color. Or the purple. Let's do... Do I have a darker purple? I don't think I do. I do in another color, in another brand somewhere. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find a good purple metallic. There we go. I don't 
have much of this left. I have to get some more of this color. I love this purple color. Like I literally have nothing left. That's probably going to need a, two coats. A little wood piece. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, let me dry that real quick. I'm going to turn on my glue gun. That gives that. We'll go there. Once my glue gun heats up. Hi Janet. We are working on tags. Let's see. Uh, I have. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, there we go. There we go. I have, that would probably look pretty. It's too big. Do I have a littler one? That might go. No. Hmm. <laughs> Which one, the vellum one, the top one, or the bottom one? Which butterfly goes better? You guys let me know which one you think goes better. Nope, too big. Ooh, this one might be good. Different color. So it was a different color. Nice size, but two different color. Nope. Bottom, top, top, bottom, 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 top. <laughs> I actually like this one. It seems like on the camera it blends in, but it really doesn't. It kind of pops against the background nice. Especially if I um, pop the wings up like that. And so I think I like that one. I think I'm just going to go with that one. And so that's that. I want to put a sentiment here. And let's see. What else do I want to do? Let's stamp a fairy on here. Let's stamp a fairy. Let's do. 
one up there. And that's going to go there. We're going to put a sentiment up there. And Oh, I always wanted to go to a butterfly farm. We have one here, too. Oh, I just broke a stamp. What the even hell happened? <sighs> this makes me so mad. What pisses me off about stamp companies is they practically glue it to the plastic. And when it's a fragile stamp and you can't get it off and it just rips... I wasn't even pulling that hard and it ripped. And nothing makes me more mad than that. Why do this? Why? It is, doesn't make any sense to me why. I'd rather have the stamp loose in a freaking package than have them practically glue it or put it on when it's hot, which is what they're doing, and then it gets stuck and the stamp rips. It makes me so angry when they do stuff like that. I feel like telling the company to go screw themselves because, I mean, that is such a poor way to do things. Because, I mean, it just ripped. I wasn't even pulling on it very hard. It's just very frustrating that they, they seem to think that that's a, a good way to do things. For some reason. Now, who knows if that's even going to stamp properly. Like, don't put it on plastic if you have to put it on where it's practically glued on. Don't do it. I don't need it on there. Nobody needs it on there that badly. It's on there crooked, but I don't care. It's fine. It, 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 it stamped fine. I just hope I don't ever lose that now because... <laughs> forever that little tiny tiny piece has to be stuck on there and it needs to be put into a bag or something now because I'm going to end up losing it. I just don't get these companies who think that that's a good idea. I've had that happen one other time and since then I'm, I'm very careful with removing them and I was being careful. It just ripped off. I wasn't yanking. I wasn't sitting there going, ah. I was just pulling it off like normal and it just ripped. I don't like that at all when they do that. I got so mad the first time that happened too. All right, glue gun, seriously? Ugh, come on, ain't nobody got time for that. I just don't get it why some of these companies do stupid things. Doesn't make sense to me. Like they're so much more concerned about how it looks in a package 
than the functionality of it that it doesn't make sense. Yes, that's right, Jane, they're jackasses. Something that was dry enough for me to pull up, but apparently it was not. Well, that's okay. I'm going to put these in my fairy journal. I love them. They're so cute. I might put some, I need to put some stickles on them, of course. There's not enough sparkle. Not enough sparkle. I like that channel name too. Let's make a mess today. I think I just subscribed to your channel, didn't I? Actually, I think I did. Oh, yeah. I think I did. I think I subscribed to you. Because I love to make a mess, too. If my, if my channel name wasn't Pink Poodle Crafts, it would definitely be Let's Make a Giant Mess and see what happens. <laughs> I really like these. They came out cute, didn't they? Didn't they come out cute? That one has the little, oh, I didn't read it to you. The clouds are lined with silver. Focus, jackass, focus. Humpy McJackass is just not cooperating. The clouds are lined with silver, as often we are told. I give you this, my heartfelt wish, that yours be lined with gold. Cute. You know what I should have done? I should have embossed these guys. Duh. I didn't think about it. I, why do I do that? I think of that as an afterthought th all the time. I'm like, I should have embossed it. That's okay. I like the matte finish of it all, kind of. Except for the metallic paint. Because, like, that kind of looks cool like that. If I would have embossed it, it probably would have taken away from the metallic paint. Groovy! Yeah, I like these. They came out cute. They came out so cute. So um, I'm going to be doing a video this week. Uh, I mentioned this in the Happy Mail video. And now I, what did I do with the little things I made? Um, hmm. Oh, there they are. Showing you how to make these little charms. Focus. And then unfocus. Little Ouija board charms. We're going to make some of those. And all different charms, not just these. We're going to make other charms too. Um, but I just need to make some of these. I don't like the way these turned out particularly. I'm going to, I've got some different graphics I'm going to play with. Um, but yeah. What do you want, Anne? She says, I want it. What do you want? What do you want, lady? Yeah, it's cute. I want to make uh, little necklace sets and sell them. Um, I used to do that all the time. I used to make all kinds of cute little sets and sell them and stuff. Tammy's like, no Ouija for me. <laughs> oh, the Ouija board and Yeah, they're cute, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I hope you guys had fun today. I think we're going to wrap it up because my ass is starting to hurt. And yesterday, my back started hurting on one side, which is really weird. Um, normally, like... It, I don't know whether it was my, I don't know whether it's my back or like my kidney area. I'm not sure. Cause you know how they say sometimes if your back hurts on one side. So, and, it, and it's a little higher up than my normal pain. So I don't know what it is, but sometimes like sitting in this chair for as long as I've been, it's kind of aggravating it. It was hurting worse yesterday. I literally was like, what the hell? Um, 
it's not it's not as bad today, but it's still getting kind of aggravated from sitting in this chair. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I had fun. So we did this and we did uh what's the other thing we did? There it is. And we did this. We did all kinds of fairy things. These would look cute in here, actually. Let me put my paper back in. Where is my paper? I've got this one and the other one. So I should make little pockets and put these in there. Where's the other paper? There it is. They say these are marker papers, but I'm going to use these as just to stretch, you know, as just, what do you call it? Um, mixed media paper. It ain't going to matter to me none. It'll, it'll be fine. I think that this paper's thick enough where it can take it. Oh. This has information. Information. Yeah, about the butterfly journals. So, yeah. So I should put a tag in each there in my new fairy journal. This is a different type of fairy journal. I'm going to make a, a fairy journal, and then this one will be a fairy journal, too. I had fun. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I appreciate it. Don't forget, on Monday, we will do Mixed Media Mashup. Hopefully, it'll stay Monday and not move to Tuesday. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll get all my crap done. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Yes, and a happy Mother's Day to those. I think that's this Sunday, isn't it? Mother's Day? Yeah, right? I don't know. I don't keep track anymore since I don't have my mom anymore. I barely keep track of Mother's Day anymore. Hmm. Mother's Day tomorrow. Well, tomorrow's Saturday. Well, I guess technically it's Saturday, so I guess tomorrow would be Sunday. Because isn't it on Sunday, Mother's Day? Mm. Right? Yeah, it's Friday night here. Well, it's now 1 o'clock in the morning, so it's after midnight, so it's technically... Saturday, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I will talk to you all later. I hope you guys had fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. And whoops, whoops, can you hear can me? You hear me? Um, um, I hope you guys. Did I actually shut my shut my, shut my thing off? Thing off? No, I don't know what I did. Anyway, I thought I accidentally shut my micro microphone off, but I think I just turned on the other one by accident. <laughs> I'm doing well. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. I will talk to you later. Good night, everyone. Bye. Poodle Pack out.